Good morning. It's Phil Thatch here, and today I am at the Tennessee River Park Curtain Pole Road area, which uh, at one time was my very favorite place to photograph birds. Maybe now it's fallen to second or third or fourth. Uh, last week I came here and uh, wasn't a whole lot happening, and it was about 20 degrees, and you have to get out of the car to photograph birds here, so I left and went on to Harrison Bay State Park where I could do it from inside the car, but this week it is 40 degrees warmer than one week ago so i'm going to hang around here and uh, i walked down to the pond a minute ago and didn't see a whole lot but uh, i'm going to spend some time here and see if anything comes along and uh, try to capture it today is february the 7th and it's interesting because this bush here at curtain pole road has some new growth on it and right beside it here's a tree And this tree still hasn't lost all of its foliage from last year. So we've got fall and spring happening in one location. Okay, here's some Canada geese at River Park Curtain Pole Road. This is with the 500 F4 and no teleconverter on the Z6. And I'm gonna ask a lot of questions to be answered in the comments on this video. And the first one is, are these geese behaving in a way that lends you to believe that they are pairing up to mate? Second question, do you think there's anything wrong with the wings on this Canada goose? Same goose, same unusual looking wings when compared to the geese in other parts of this video. Is there something wrong with that goose or is it just hanging its wings that way on purpose? Not much happening here at Curtin Paul Road, just uh, mostly Canada geese. Um, their behavior was kind of unusual. I think maybe this unseasonably warm 60, let me see what the car says it is, 69. So it's 69 degrees and I think maybe that uh, unseasonably warm temperature may have those geese thinking that uh, it's time to time to start mating or something. They were looked like they were trying to pair up and argue about it a little bit. So I, I got some of that behavior uh, for you, but even with that, Canada geese to me are, are kind of boring. So uh, I'm gonna go someplace else and see what else I can find. Well, now I'm at another location. I'm at the Chickamauga Dam, which is another part of the Tennessee River Park, just like the Curtin Pole Road area that I just left. Uh, you may be able to see in the background the, the spillways at the dam that are running wide open right now because we've had a lot of rain. And, you know, I come here all the time. It's a regular spot for me, and I've always heard of peregrine falcons being here. I was so excited to see a peregrine falcon, I couldn't even pronounce its name correctly. I've always called them peregrine, but for some reason on the day that I actually get to see one, I pronounced the name wrong and will do so for the rest of this video. Um, to take care of, I think they originally brought them here to, to maybe take care of a pigeon problem that they had on the Ten Bridge Railroad Bridge. Let's see if I can get that in the, in the shot. So there's the Ten Bridge 
railroad bridge right there. Uh, but I've never seen a Perigen Falcon here before. Uh, my friend Robert Scott has seen them on a number of occasions and I'm sure some of my other bird photography buddies have, but personally I haven't. But today as I drove in, I looked at the top of a power pole. I'm gonna see if I can switch this around quickly. I looked up there and on the very top of that power pole, off to the left hand side, you might see in this shot just a, just a little bump. But what's up there is a Perigen Falcon. So what I did was I got here and I got my Z6 and I got my uh, FTZ adapter and I put my 2.0 teleconverter on it and I set it up for DX crop. So that's 500 times 2 is 1000 times 1 1.5 for the DX crop that I turned on. That's 1500 millimeters. And with that, I was able to get some video of the Perigen Falcon that I'll show to you now. You can see lots of zebra bars uh, where the sky is overexposed, but I needed to overexpose the sky to get the Perigen Falcon in focus, or uh, exposed correctly, I should say. And of course, if you're doing 30 frames per second, you want to be at 1 60th of a second. And there is uh, F8, which is wide open on an F4 lens with a two teleconverter. In order to get the exposure just right, I, I adjusted the ISO. So it took ISO 160 to get everything like it needed to be. But there it is. My first Perigen Falcon. Just sitting up there knowing that there's no way I can get to it. It hasn't paid any attention to me at all down here. Of course, as you can see, I'm a long way from that sucker. <laughs> It's way up there at the top left of that center power structure. All right, there's the up-close look at the Peregrine Falcon on the top of the power transmission tower. And here's the next question. Do you know if the Peregrine Falcons were brought to the Chickamauga Dam and the railroad bridge area by man or if they came here on their own? to uh, eat rock pigeons, which is probably what their diet at least used to consist of. I don't know if it consists of that now or not. I'm not sure what they're eating these days. It's probably birds, because that's what peregrine falcon eat. But put it in the comments below if you know or have an idea or a suspicion about how these beautiful birds came to be around the Chickamauga Dam. I've read that they were an endangered species in America until 1999 and they are making a comeback. So no longer endangered is the peregrine falcon. Okay, there's some other bird that's harassing the Perigen Falcon. I can't tell what kind it is, and I'm not good enough to track that thing, but it's harassed the Perigen Falcon two or three times. Looks like it's left now. That is crazy. Looks like it might be getting a little windy up there. It's fairly windy today. I'm right by a building, storage building here. So, oh, the, the bird that's harassing it's come back. I wish I could tell what that thing is. It's landed on the power pole now. Oh, the Perigen Falcon's chasing it off. Oh well, bye bye, Perigen. Now I'm at Booker T. Washington State Park and I'm watching these American coots do some 
interesting fishing. I guess they're fishing. Okay, so the final question is, do American coots eat fish, or are they only vegetarians? They look a great deal like a common gallinule, which I photographed in Florida, and I saw one of those with a fish in its mouth, but I've never seen an American coot eat a fish, but this diving behavior makes me think that they're diving for fish. I could be completely wrong, so let me know if you know what their diet is. That one's just gnawing on an old leaf, it looks like. And also, I want to make sure and say thanks for watching this video. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to take a look, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.